You're listening to Greater Good Radio Hawaii. Today's guest is Clint Arnoldis, President and CEO of Central Pacific Bank. Please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. So how did you end up in Hawaii? Well, that was just uh, mostly good fortune. Uh, I, at the time, was living in Pasadena, California, and very happy running a, a very good community bank there that was privately owned. And out of the blue, I got a call from a headhunter, an executive recruiter, who uh, told me about this opportunity with Central Pacific Bank. And I hadn't previously uh, done any business in Hawaii, so I, I wasn't terribly familiar with the bank. Uh, but I certainly was familiar with Hawaii. We used to come here on vacation a lot. It was actually our favorite place to come. We'd, we'd come um, every year and spent several Christmases here with our children. And uh, it sounded kind of intriguing. We were thinking about retiring in Hawaii. Uh, but I wanted to make sure it was a good organization, a good opportunity. That's when Hawaii was still having its economic problems, too. So I just needed to uh, n- know more about the environment from a, a work perspective. And after doing due diligence uh, and seeing the opportunity here, uh, I, I jumped at it. And fortunately, I was uh, selected from a national search to to be the CEO for Central Pacific Bank. Was this your first CEO position? No. Uh, I was uh, made a CEO 13 years ago. Um, and uh, that's that's kind of an interesting story, too, uh, how that happened, uh, if you've got time for a semi-long story. Yeah? Okay. Um, at the for time, you, we have time. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> at the time, uh, when I, I, I lived in Las Vegas at one point in my career, and I was initially sent there uh, to... Uh, run the wholesale part of First Interstate Bank of Nevada. And the, by the wholesale part, I mean the commercial banking, uh, the commercial real estate area, um, cash management, those type of functions, something that the typical consumer wouldn't be touching. And um, the bank had just been put under uh, something called an MOU by the regulators, which meant you know they, they were in some trouble and uh, needed to have uh, a a workout performed in in the wholesale part of the bank that I was responsible for. So anyway, I worked through that, got them out of the MOU within a year, and um, just kind of kept my head down and worked hard. I was an executive vice president. Uh, First Interstate was a fairly retail-oriented bank, so traditionally the CEO came out of the retail side. And there were two presidents in the retail side. One ran northern Nevada, one ran southern Nevada. And it was just kind of given they were going to get the CEO job. So, uh, frankly, it never entered my mind that at that particular institution, uh, I would become the the CEO of First Interstate Bank in Nevada. And then uh, one day, you know, you always have to expect the unexpected in your career. And you have to capitalize on it when it happens. You know, change, change, uh, I believe, always comes bearing gifts. And here's a great example. Um, so the CEO is scheduled to speak at an annual event that they have in Las Vegas where the leading um, business leaders from the community talk to a group in one of those huge convention rooms that they have. So 4,000 people typically attended this thing. And the CEO of, of First Interstate Bank in Nevada, which was the biggest bank in Nevada, uh, was scheduled to represent the financial side. And uh, so the morning came. This thing started at 10 o'clock. The morning came. And he calls in sick. I mean, he can't even get out of bed. And here he is, um, you know, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. By the time he calls in, this thing starts at 10. So these two presidents had uh, to pick up the slack. And guess what? They were scared stiff uh, to do it. And they actually didn't want to do it. They came to me and asked me if I'd do it, which uh, I still am in disbelief they would make that kind of a move. Uh, because that was clearly an opportunity, you know, an opportunity to shine. And they and they ran from it instead of ran toward it. And you got to run toward these opportunities when they come in your life. So b- by then it was 9 o'clock. And so uh, I agreed I would do it. I'd give this speech. It was a half-hour speech. And um, I looked at the presentation that the CEO had prepared, and it just didn't flow for me. It just wasn't me. So I scrapped it. So, you know, by by this time I've got about 20 minutes to uh, get something pulled together that I can give to these 4,000 people. And so I, I just got really focused and did it. And it was one of those days uh, when everything just clicked. And uh, the, the presentation was received very well. Um, 
and and I took a little different spin on things, tried to put a little humor in it, and and everything really worked. And it just so happened every one of our uh, member of our board of directors was in the audience, and um, so that the speech was very successful. And about sixty days later, the CEO unexpectedly resigned, and um, I was absolutely stunned when the board called me in and asked me to be the CEO uh, because I wasn't. I just wasn't looking for it. I knew I'd done a good job, um, and I knew I had an opportunity to shine in a a somewhat intimidating situation uh, in front of the board of directors. So, uh, you know, really, it it uh, it wasn't a, again. It wasn't a carefully laid plan I had. I just um, stuck to the fundamentals and worked hard. Kept my head down. Um, stayed out of office politics and gossip, and just did what I I thought was right. And it ended up uh, getting me a big reward. I'm very grateful.